Hey guys, so with the NFL draft starting, hey guys, so with the first round of the NFL draft starting on Thursday, I'm now doing my final 2021 NFL mock draft, and we do have trades here. So this is a mock draft with trades, full first round. Uh, so let's get straight into it. Uh, starting off at number one, we're gonna go Trevor Lawrence. This is pretty obvious. You're stupid for not thinking that Trevor Lawrence, if you think that Trevor Lawrence won't get one, it's pretty obvious that he will. He's a generational quarterback prospect. He's better than Joe Burrow. I think he has potential to be a top three quarterback in the NFL. Uh, he's a future MVP, all pro quarterback, and I think he'd very likely be the second best quarterback, quarterback in the NFL to Patrick Mahomes. Now, moving on to number two, we have the Jets, and I think this is also pretty easy. They're going to be taking Zach Wilson. And even though I think Justin Fields can't end up actually being better than Zach Wilson, the Jets are going to pick Zach Wilson. They pretty much said it themselves. And uh, it's a pretty easy pick. He's the second best quarterback in uh, this class. And he's got a ton of potential. He's a very, very good prospect. And they need a quarterback. They traded Sam Darnold. So, like, I don't see how they don't take Zach Wilson here. Now, moving on to the 49ers at three. Now, this is where things start to get interesting. They're going to take a quarterback, but the question is who? And I'm going to have them taking Justin Fields. So I had them taking Trey Lance last time, but I think that they are going to be taking Justin Fields here. As he had an awesome pro day, I think now Justin Fields is starting to be the majority third overall pick over Mac Jones, who people somehow think is going to go number three, even though, like, I think that his ceiling is not much higher than Jimmy G, and there's probably like a 50% chance that he actually doesn't end up being much better than Jimmy Garoppolo. He's got he's going to be solid right off the bat. I still don't think he's going to be a starting quarterback though, so he's doesn't have much high of a ceiling at all. Uh, and Justin Fields has a really really high ceiling. I think he's the second highest ceiling in this class. Trevor Lawrence. He can be a really good player if he just fixes up some of his game. And his tape wasn't great from last year, but he had a great pro day. And he is overall an awesome player. And for the most of the year, he was pretty much the consensus second overall pick. Now moving on to number four, we have the Falcons. And uh, we're going to take the first non-quarterback off the board here in Kyle Pitts. So I think if uh, the Falcons are take picking up four, they don't decide to trade. And we see... Uh, Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, and Justin Fields go top three. I think Falcons are going to go Trey Lance or Kyle Pitts here. And I think they are going to want to go with Pitts. He's a generational tight end prospect, one of the best tight end prospects ever. Uh, he has the potential to be a top three tight end and be up there with Travis Kelsey and George Kittle as one of the best. So I don't think that the Falcons can miss on this uh, prospect here. They could go for a quarterback and draft Matt Ryan's replacement, especially since Trey Lance is still probably a couple years away from being a good quarterback anyways. But I think that they do have to go with Kyle Pitts here. And he's been rising up the boards a bit. He's been um, awesome. And he, he had a great year in Florida. So I think they've got to take Kyle Pitts at four. Now moving on to number five. With Kyle Pitts gone at four, the Bengals could take Panay Sewell, Rashawn Slater, or Jamar Chase. But I'm gonna think, I think they're going to take... Panay Sewell. He's just got more potential than Rashawn Slater. And Rashawn Slater's uh, better right off the bat, but uh, J Jamar Chase is can be a franchise wide receiver. He, I think he has all pro potential. But the problem is if Joe Burrow is uh, sitting on his arm and injured, he isn't. it doesn't matter if you have an all pro wide receiver in Jamar Chase if he can't throw him the ball. And with Panay Sewell, at least he will get a lot more protection with a potential all-pro tackle there. And he can throw to some of his receivers that he does have, even though they aren't great. I think that's a problem that they can address in later rounds. We have T. Higgins, who I think can be a solid number two receiver. So I think next year, if they can draft receivers, I don't think they're going to... They're still going to be a bottom 10 team next year, but... I think it's more important to protect Joe Burrow right now than give him a weapon. Moving on to number six, we have the Miami Dolphins, and they're going to be taking Jamar Chase. Uh, at six, I think they've, they're they going to be taking uh, Jamar Chase or Kyle Pitts, whichever one's available. Both of them are available. 
I think they might go Pitts, but they've got to take a Jamar Chaser. It's pretty much a no-brainer, giving Tua an elite weapon. Uh, next up at 7, we have the Lions, and they're going to be taking the second wide receiver off the board here in Shaylen Waddle. And, I mean, I've watched some of his tape, and I actually think he is slightly better than Devontae Smith. And uh, Devontae Smith still has a ton of potential. I think they both Jalen Waddle and Devontae Smith can be uh, Pro Bowl-level elite wide receivers. But I do think Jalen Waddle is slightly better. And, I mean, you're giving Jared Goff a weapon here. And you're uh, seeing if J- uh, Goff can succeed. You're giving him that taster. So if he does succeed having a good receiver in Jalen Waddle, then maybe you can deal with him at quarterback. But I think you've got to give him one more year of trial here before you go ahead and pick a quarterback. So I don't think they are going to go Trey Lance. They'll just uh, go with a wide receiver here in Jalen Waddle. Moving on to number eight, we've got the Carolina Panthers, and there are multiple ways this team can go. Now, the majority of people think they're going to go with Rashawn Slater. Uh, they could go Mike Parsons. I do think that's unlikely. Uh, their number one, number two need here is a wide receiver. I think there's no way they're going to take a wide receiver. They've got two really good ones in DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson, who are just lacking a quarterback. And I think if Sam Darnold can turn out to be a solid quarterback for the Panthers then this could end up being a good team having Christian McCaffrey, who's the best running back in the league and can sometimes even play as another wide receiver as well. So I think they're going to go with Sean Slater here. And they could take Sertan, but I think Slater's the best pick. Right off the bat, he will be a very good starting tackle. He's very technically refined. So I think he will do a really good job of protecting Sam Darnold. Now, moving on to number nine, we have the Denver Broncos. And I think they're going to take Trey Lance. If he's available here, they've got to take him. Like, Drew Locke is just not good enough. Maybe you can give him one more year, but I think um, for this first year, they can probably do a tandem, play the hot hand between Lance and Locke, as I don't know if uh, Lance will be ready anyways to uh, start this year, and they probably won't be that good next year anyways, but they're, they're kind of going through a rebuild, and if Locke can prove himself, then maybe they need to move on from Lance, but I think that is much more likely that Lance becomes their guy at QB as he's a freak athlete and I think he's like the best athletic quarterback we have seen since Lamar Jackson and he can be a kind of a low-key Lamar Jackson in the NFL. Now next up at 10 we've got the Cowboys and if he's available they 100% have to take Patrick Sertan. They need a cornerback badly and it's her number three need but for, uh, if Patrick Sertan is available they have to take him. Now, uh, we have the Giants pick and 11, and this is actually my first trade. So, it is kind of a minor trade, but I think it is something that could be effective here. So, as you can see, these are the teams that are interested, but we're going to be actually doing this with the Philadelphia Eagles. So, it's only swapping one spot, and the trade is going to be uh, the Eagles give up their 12th overall pick, as well as the 224th overall pick, which I believe is a 7th round pick. Uh, the Giants give up their 11th overall pick. And actually, the Eagles will also give up their uh, 123rd round pick, which I believe is a fourth, uh, late third or early fourth round pick. Uh, the Giants give up the 11th overall pick, as well as they uh, are also going to give up a seventh round pick next year. So uh, I think this is a pretty fa- fair trade, pretty similar to the Niners box swap that we saw last year so uh okay they do reject so you know what i think that we can maybe change this trade a little bit and maybe just do that 123rd overall pick heading to giants picking up extra assets really they don't want to do this um well the giants get uh, eagles get to move up one pick, so maybe the Giants have to give up their seventh round pick next year. They get the 123rd overall pick. Okay, we're just going to force a trade here. This is a pretty fair trade, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, there we go. So the Eagles get the 11th overall pick. And the reason why I'm doing this is I can see Devonta Smith is still available on the board. I don't think the Giants are going to take a wide receiver, as there's no point. They got Kenny Galladay, and maybe also have... Um, uh, we have Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton, who are still solid. So I don't think there's any point in taking a receiver here. So I think that we're going to move down to 12. 
and the Eagles are going to get the 11th overall pick. They want Devontae Smith, but they don't know if the Giants will be actually taking Smith. There is still the chance, so they don't want to risk it. Their number two needs a receiver. They're not going to take a quarterback here. They have faith in Hurts. I don't, I don't really have faith in him, but I think they're going to want to get Devontae Smith here for sure. Now, next up is the Giants pick. They could decide to take Micah Parsons, uh, but I think they're going to go to Christian and Darisaw. If he's available at 13 for the Chargers pick here, I think they have to take him as uh, the Chargers do definitely need a tackle. But they did get Corey Lindsley in free agency, so I don't think this is too big of a deal. They, still, they got their uh, all-pro uh, center there in Corey Lindsley, and they're going to go with J.C. Horn. Their number three need is uh, cornerback, so I think this can be a pretty good fourth pick. This is around where Horn is supposed to go, and... Even though I think they would definitely rather Darisaw than getting Darisaw at 12 for the Giants to be super, super happy with that if Slater is gone. Now, Slater's still available. They definitely take him. I'm not sold on Micah Parsons. He's been dropping a bit. I think that he's might go a bit later, kind of in this area, around 15 to 20. So the Giants are going to take Darisaw. Horn goes to the Chargers. He's a very good cornerback. He can be a CB1 in the NFL. Now, uh, moving on to the Vikings at 14. Uh, I think this is a very easy one. They're going to be taking Elijah Vera Tucker. Number one need is tackle. I think uh, Vera Tucker has tackle and guard flexibility. So he still says half here coming out of U- USC. So I think this will be uh, it's a very good pick for the Vikings. And they definitely should pick him if he's available there. Now next up at 15 were the Patriots. And they're going to be taking Mac Jones. If he's ab- available, I think they have to take him they signed cam newton on a one-year deal bring in all these uh, new guys but cam newton's not the answer now if cam newton's good then maybe but still i think they won't bring him back as mac jones maybe you can back him up for a year and then you can bring him in as i said i don't think he's that high of a ceiling which is why he shouldn't be a top 10 pick though it's a top three pick but he is still a solid quarterback who i think can be a decent average starting quarterback and that's, I think, where you would want to take an average starting quarterback in that mid-first round range. So I think this is good value for the Patriots here taking their quarterback of the future. And if he's available, they've got to take him. Now moving on to 16, we have the uh, Carolina or the uh, Arizona Cardinals, and I think that they are going to take Micah Parsons here. So it's far more available. That's way too high, but. Uh, Mike Parsons is a very good player. He can play linebackers. He's listed, but he also plays safety. He's a very flexible player. We'll have to see where he actually ends up playing in the NFL because there's no def- definition for him, but he has a ton of potential and can be a great player. The next up at 17, we have the Las Vegas Raiders, and I think they're going to be taking, after absolutely demolishing their offensive line, uh, they're going to be taking Tevin Jenkins here out of OSU. He's the best tackle available. This may be a bit high to get him, but this stays the same as my last mock draft. they got to take Tevin Jenkins here. Uh, next up, the uh, second pick in this uh, draft, I have the Miami Dolphins taking another... Uh, actually, they're going to be taking the first edge rusher in this class in Jalen Phillips, and I think he's the best one available. He's a very good player. Number four need is edge rusher for the Dolphins, so I think they're going to be going with Jalen Phillips here after uh, addressing wide receiver. Moving on to pick 19, we have Washington football team, and I think they are going to be taking uh, the fourth receiver off the board here in Rashad Bateman. Now, there's quite the drop-off between the top three and then uh, the rest, but I still think Bateman is a very good receiver. Now, there is some debate whether he is actually the fourth best, and some people may think it's Kadarius Tony or someone else, Elijah Moore, but I think it is uh, Bateman here. He's going to go number 19, Washington football team. He's going to give Fit, uh, they're going to give Fitzmagic some weapons there. Number two need is wide receiver. Now, next up at 20, we have the Chicago Bears, and I've been taking another wide receiver in. Darius Tony, so he's coming out of Florida. Number two need is receiver, so I think they're gonna take Tony here to play with Allen Robinson for a year. Andy Dalton's not ideal, but they're not gonna take a quarterback here. So in CBS mock draft, they had him taking Davis Mills, 
which would be in a Mitch Trubinsky situation 2.0. That would be insanely stupid. They could easily get him in the second round, even the third round. So they're going to go wide receiver here in Kadaris Tony. Next up at 21, we have the Colts. And I think the Colts are going to be taking Aziz Ojolari, an edge rusher out of Georgia. That's their number three need. Uh, they do need an edge rusher, and I think the Colts are a solid team who can make some noise. But I think that uh, Ojolari is their guy here. They got Carson Wentz, so hopefully he can end up uh, getting a bounce back here after a terrible year last year. And then they'll be fine at QB, just shoring up their defense. Now, speaking of defense, we have the Titans, whose defense was awful. And they could take a wide receiver here. But I really do think that they need to address that uh, defensive line. And they're going to be taking Quiddy Pay, another edge rusher, out of Michigan. So it isn't listed as one of your needs, but I think that is something they could get. Davian Clowney was a big failure for them getting zero sacks. He's heading off to the Browns. Uh, but I think that they are going to get an edge rusher. Hopefully he can get more than zero sacks. And hopefully he isn't like that bust they picked last year. That was a terrible pick in Isaiah Wilson for a second round pick next up at 23 we have the new york jets and i think the jets are going to be finally taking caleb farley off the board he's in my opinion overall the best cornerback available and uh, he was a pick ninth overall to the broncos head of Sturtan in my first mock draft uh, but he's falling a bit because of his injury now he's looked at as more of an elite first round pick i think he still could go inside the top 20 but i think a better pick for him. The Jets will be willing to uh, take the risk on him and his injury history. Their number four needs cornerback. And now moving on to the Steelers. This is where we have our second trade. And this is going to be a trade with the Packers. Uh, so no team is actually interested, which is interesting. But there we go. Pick 29. So, I mean, we'll see what they do here. Uh, Steelers giving up the 24th overall pick, and they're going to be moving down, so five spots, probably some decent assets involved. I mean, let's say this 92nd overall pick as well, in the 256th overall pick. Uh, so last pick, one of the last picks in the draft. We'll see how this does. Uh, okay, so this thing is like blocked off here. I have no idea what that says. But trade is rejected by the Packers. So, I mean, we could just, like, do the 92nd overall pick. I think we're just going to force trade here. Because I don't want this trade, but I think it is likely that this could happen. So, now the Packers are picking 24th overall. And uh, you'll see why this trade is happening. But uh, the Packers, it's... A combination of the Packers wanting to move up, the Steelers wanting to move down and get those assets. So the Packers can be taking Greg Newsome, and there are quite a few teams that do would probably want a uh, Greg Newsome here, being a really good cornerback. But I think uh, the Packers do need a cornerback to play beside Jair Alexander. Caleb Farley was just picked, but I think like we have the Saints here who uh, could take a cornerback, and the Bills as well. Uh, I mean, they're, they're behind, but I think the Saints could take one, even like the Browns or something, uh, and the Jaguars as well. So the uh, Packers are moving up to take right and use up. Next up at 25, we have the Jags, and I think they're going to be giving Trevor Lawrence some protection here by taking Sam Cosme out of Texas. And they could go wide receiver who would give Trevor Lawrence a weapon, but I think for now, they're probably just going to give him protection with Sam Cosme. There's going to be a lot of wide receivers. A lot of teams uh, need a wide receiver. Uh, so I think that the, the uh, Jags are probably just going to take a tackle here in Sam Cosme. He's a very good player. They could maybe trade down, as I think uh, a team like the Saints maybe would want their first dibs on a wide receiver. But, uh, yeah, I think... The Jags will be taking Sam Cosme. Now, moving on to 26, we have got the Browns. And I think the Browns are going to be going with a player that has actually risen up a lot. And and Jamin Davis. He's a linebacker. That's their number three need. And he's been he's risen up the rankings a lot. Now, a lot of people have him at the first round pick. 
So I think that uh, the Browns are going to want to take him here. Now next with that 27, we have the Baltimore Ravens. And I think that the Ravens are going to be taking another wide receiver here. And Terrence Marshall, it's pr- pretty much a toss-up between Marshall and Elijah Moore. I've seen uh, both of them be higher than each other. So I think they're just going to take Terrence Marshall. And then we've got the Saints here who are going to take Elijah Moore. So I think they could go either way. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but I think that Elijah Moore is probably just going to go 28 to this uh, Saints. And now we have the Steelers. And uh, this is why they traded down here. They're going to be taking a running back. And if I can even find him, I think yeah, the running backs are super low. Najee Harris, who's ranked behind Kyle Trask there. So they need a halfback after uh, losing James Conner, who wasn't that good anyways. But there wasn't going to be a team ahead of them that was going to take a running back. So they take those extra assets there. And get Najee Harris, which I think is what they'll probably do if they want to take him. They'll just move down. Which leads us to our next pick, the Bills. And there are multiple ways they can go. I think Barmore is a pretty good guy for them to pick here. You can even go like Cormoa or something like that. Um, But I think that another guy that they could take is Travis Etienne. As Devin Singletary is not that good. But you've got Barmore still on the board. Their number one need here. So I think they're going to take Christian Barmore ahead of Travis Etienne, actually. And they need to fix up that defense there. So moving on to 31. Second last pick in the draft, we've got the Chiefs. And I think they're very easily going to be taking Jeremiah Owusu Coromella. He's a guy that I think can go a bit higher. He can even be like a top 20 pick. So I think this is kind of a steal here, even though it's not what their top three needs. I think they've got to go with Cormella. And now with the last pick in the draft, we've got uh, your Super Bowl champions, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And they're going to be taking Trevon Mayrick. Number three need is a safety. We've got Antoine Winfield Jr., who is pretty good. But I think that they are going to be going with uh, Mayrick. So here you can see the draft grades, A+, plus, A+, plus, A+, plus, A, A-, 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 B minus, but that is probably what's going to happen. Now, they're saying Sean Slater's an F, which I think is pretty stupid. That's pretty much the majority to go at 8. So, yeah, and then A plus for Lance. B minus for Sir Kay, that should be an A plus. Devontae uh, Smith, an A. Darisot, B plus. Chasey Horner, B plus. B, Mac Jones, A plus. Like, what I thought. All the rest probably just A pluses. Um, and then, yeah, a lot of B pluses. Pluses here, but I mean, Cody Pay, C minus. Eh. They say Jamie Davis is a D minus, but yeah, I think these are all pretty realistic uh, trades here to go by. And yeah, so they said Najee Harris at 29 is a B. So if they took it at 24, that'd probably be like a C minus or something. So I think they would have to trade down and they get those extra assets. So none of these teams are going to take him, anyways, but uh, you can see the grades uh, here. I used P, a uh, profitable focus, because you can do trades and all that. I think this uh, grading thing is pretty cool. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed. If you did, as always, please remember to leave a like and subscribe. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.